going to compete in the Big Ten and compete well. Uh, we're ready for him. we got a whole off season, but we'll be prepared. Uh, he's going to lead our men, and, and they're excited about the opportunity. But we're, we're going to be ready. Thank you. All right. Martin, you just got on This job is about a lot more than football. Exists in those things. What specific traits did you see uh, from this kind of system and then in the interview process that, that made you convinced that Sean could be in the lab? Yeah, first of all, he had all the attributes that we were looking for. We wanted someone of integrity. We wanted someone with energy and passion, as you could probably see from that press conference. Um, we wanted a teacher, somebody. We're a development program. We have to get young men in and develop them on and off the field. Uh, the players especially expressed to me they wanted someone they could relate to. They wanted someone that doesn't see them just as a football player but helps them uh, and they can talk about life outside of those lines. Uh, and we wanted someone that competes. We want to win. We want someone that's going to fight. And Deshaun is a fighter, and, and he's a Bruin. He loves this place. And so he hit those marks of all that. And then when you talk to more people, Deshaun's name resonated all the time. People really respect him. He commands the room. I've had, I've talked to so many people over the last 72 hours uh, in the NFL, uh, guys that have played here, and they all say the same thing about Deshaun. He is a leader of men. He's well-respected. He's hungry. And I want someone that, that wants it, that wants it bad. Because you gotta fight. You gotta be a this is we need a modern day CEO. Someone that embraces NIL, helps our student athletes, embraces recruiting. It's a 24-7 thing. You gotta fight to win recruiting battles. I want someone that wants to fight. And I'm gonna partner with him and we're gonna give him all the resources to do that. Um, I bet on him, we bet on him, and and I take that any day. Uh, how, how big was the outpouring of support from the players Friday morning after Chip's announcement? The players were tremendous. Uh, I, I want to say uh, when I talked to the whole team, they were very mature. I asked them if you want questions. They asked questions about what's the time frame, gave them the time frame. Um, they asked about just, you know, what kind of things are you looking for? I shared that with them. And then uh, I took a group of leaders from the team, about 12 to 14, in a private conference room. And we spent about an hour, and I just said, hey, what are you looking for? And, and that's where Ethan Garbers, Logan, HUD, um, Jay Toy, a lot of those guys told me, like, hey, we got a great culture. We have a strong culture. Uh, we want someone that relates to us. We want someone um, that pushes us but also can relate to us. And uh, it was a great conversation. It just it just helped me. Uh, in all honesty, it, like, it made me, like, like, so energized to go get a leader that can that can take them. You know, they put so much into this program, and they're like, we want to go into Big Ten, we want to win, and we need someone that can lead us and help us. And so um, they have been mature. They, I'm so impressive. I mean, you've spent time with our young men. Like, our student athletes are so impressive, and I just walked out of there with a level of accountability and responsibility. I got to get this right uh, because they deserve that. With, uh, I know we're not talking about Chip, but how much – were you able to kind of prepare in advance for what was going to happen? My job as an AD is to be prepared. For anybody that thinks we weren't prepared, I was prepared. I, I, I'm not living under a rock, okay? I want I want someone that wants to be here, and and uh, and we're prepared. Every AD in the country has to have um, a list, has to have process ready in case a coach gets hit by a bus or something happens. So we were prepared, and that's why we were able to execute in under 60 hours because we were focused, we were deliberate, we talked to a lot of people, and we ended up with the right guy at the right time. What do you think it means to hire a black head coach when most of the coaches in college football are not black, but most of the players are? I understand that. To me, I wasn't setting out to hire a certain kind of coach. I just wanted to find a leader of men that can lead our program. Um, obviously, it's important because of the, the lack of minority coaches, so I, I get that it's important. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, He's a Bruin, and, and he's a leader, and that's what was most important. He's, he's the right guy at the right time for our program. So I understand the importance. Um, a lot of people want to look up to someone that looks like them. Uh, I'm very aware of that. I've had players reach out to me and say how important it is that he is a black man. So, so I don't want to lessen that. That is important, but that's not the focus. You know, The focus is being a leader that can lead our team and our program to where it needs to be. And it seems like he has the ability to resonate at every level. High school, college, and pro, where everybody wants to go. Recruiting and NIL is about relationship building, and it's about hunger. It's about it's about activity and passion and energy. And Deshaun has that. He's hungry for that. He he develops relationships to, to like better than probably anybody that I've been around, coach wise, in a long time. And that's talking to the players, talking to the coaches, 
uh, talking to people in the NFL, talking to donors. You know, Deshaun resonates with everybody because he's a great at uh, building relationships. What's your, what's kind of, oh, thank you. I think it's important that you got to be yourself. You know, I told Deshaun when all this started, I said, you've got to be authentically you uh, because that's what is beautiful about Deshaun. He's a great person. He's humble. He's not the loudest, but he carries impact. And he's a relationship builder. He's got great relationships. And that's, that's what you need. A head coach has got to be a great relationship builder, especially with all the noise, uh, NIL, transfer portal. you got to build meaningful relationships. I want a head coach that if somebody wants to transfer and they come into the office, they're crying in tears because of the relationship that this coach and this staff has built with them. That's what you got to have. It's all about relationships. And he does that really well. What's your sense of um, NIL, why UCLA is kind of lagged behind at this point, especially in football? And what's the vision for kind of getting it to a better place? Yeah, I think starting off, first of all, everybody doesn't know what everybody has. Everybody, Every school says that they need more. Every school needs more. But it's a lot of numbers out there that don't don't mean anything. So I don't, I don't buy stock in, like, we're so behind. The fact is we have guys that have NIL on the roster this year. We've had plenty of them, you know. Now, we got to do that more. I think UCLA, usually we're slower to new regulations because it was a murky time. But I would tell you in the last, since the end of the season, we have, we have done a lot more leaps and bounds. With men of Westwood, we're talking to donors. Um, I've had probably 16 appointments with donors in the last three weeks talking about NIL. So we understand the importance of it. Our student athletes understand. And I'm telling you, we're going to be all in. We have been all in. And I think now we've got a leader that embraces it. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people want to hear from the CEO. You know, and Deshaun understands that and gets that. And uh, like I said, we're meeting with our collective men of Westwood. has been great. We're meeting with donors um, tomorrow and Friday. We're, we're attacking it. This is the time. You, you, the IRS is cracking down on potential tax deductibility of NIL. What's your sense of what that'll do to the marketplace? No, I don't know. Um, I, I know that men of Westwood we're working on, or they're working on right now, a partnership with the 501c3. So they're, they're evolving and building that. Um, we'll have to see where that goes, but we're gonna always do things the right way. We're not gonna cut corners. That's not who we are. Um, but, you know, we have to evolve and, and just monitor whatever the regulations are at the time. A good CEO is really only as good as their executives who work with them and under them. What type of support can you give him to help fill out the rest of that coaching staff, which yeah. would be the, the other executives? No, I'm very well aware. He's a first-time head coach, so you've got you've to build a support structure around him to help him be successful. He and I have had great conversations with that. Uh, for example, one of the positions that I, I want him to have is a former head coach. I want someone on staff that's been a head coach that he can talk to, relate to, uh, and, and help him along that. Um, I know science is really important to him. We'll probably add some people into science, um, weightlifting, soft tissue, those kind of things. Um, and, and then we're gonna we're gonna add in the recruiting. You know, now it's not just recruiting; it's, it's player development, player evaluation. So we're gonna bolster that up a little bit. Um, he knows we're gonna give him the resources to be successful. You can't you can't have a first time head coach and not give the infrastructure and support to help them be successful. So we're gonna bolster that up. Yeah. How do you help him be comfortable with the idea that? You know, somebody on the staff is going to have more experience than him. He's securing who he is. You know, he's securing who he is. He doesn't worry about this guy scored touchdowns in the Super Bowl. You know, he's not he's not worried about that. You can't you can't be in this job and uh, and be concerned about that. As a matter of fact, you want to surround yourself with a lot of experience and a lot of diverse thought. So um, I don't worry about that at all. Fan engagement. Uh, that's probably been an issue under Chip in a lot of ways. How do you see that improving this offseason, especially to try to get butts in the seats, get yeah. dollars flowing? I think we have a lot going for us right now. We're going to the Big Ten. We're going to have new opponents that people are excited about. Uh, we've got Deshaun Foster now. Uh, I think I think people are excited about him, his energy, his enthusiasm. Uh, I think you'll see more people, not just alumni, but in the community. And so we're trending in the right way. You know, this is... And again, and again, the other thing too about UCLA football, this is not something that we got to build from the studs. We won eight games last year, nine games the year before. A lot of places that change coaches, they won two games and three games. We got great young men in this program. So if anything, he's going to hit the ground running and we're going to keep moving. This, I think, really bolsters the energy and enthusiasm of UCLA football in a way we haven't had in a number of years. And I'm excited about that. 
you said you ended up interviewing 11 candidates. Some, some of them, I believe, ended up like, they already held head coaching gigs elsewhere. What about maybe Sean's potential told you he was the right man over maybe some other candidates who already had it? As we got through the process, I always had Deshaun in the back of my head, and you compare with that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and you compare that, and as the process evolved, uh, he just stood out as, as being able to check all those boxes with, with what we wanted. Um, you know, there's no perfect candidate, right? Anytime you do a search, that, you know, you're never going to get perfect. I know everybody tries to pontificate about who it should be, but, but no one's perfect. You know, if this coach has a lot of experience, well, maybe they're not available. Or if this, or if this coach hits all the boxes but has never been a head coach, you know, you don't look for perfect. You look for what's right. And Deshaun was what's right, and he feels right, and he has been, and I believe in him. So it's all those things that, that he represents. Yeah, and you have also mentioned the term CEO, uh, someone who oversees all successful aspects of the modern baseball program. Just what about maybe Deshaun kind of stands out to you from that standpoint about what you're supposed to be looking for? As a CEO? Hunger. Deshaun has hunger. You've got to have an energy and passion to do this job. It's hard. You gotta recruit all the time. You gotta engage in NIL. You gotta scheme. You gotta understand third and five, down and distance. You gotta manage personnel, a building of 70 plus people. You gotta want to do all those things. You gotta have an energy and a hunger. And the thing with him, as you heard, he's not gonna lose. He's gonna push. He's gonna work. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. He's gonna work his butt off, as well as the staff, to do it. He told me, um, you know, at my house, let's see. Sunday night late, he came over after the Rose Bowl, after Rose Bowl, after the Super Bowl, um, and he said, "Listen, Martin, no one's gonna outwork me. No one's gonna outwork this program. If we lose a game, it's gonna be because we just weren't good enough that day. But I guarantee you, I am gonna do everything I can and in my power to make this program successful. And that right there I, made me want to run through a wall for him. So we're gonna we're gonna get it going." Given the timing, was there ever even a consideration of going interim until November or December traditional coach? You know, Dave, I, I had in the back of my head, but I never wanted to do that. We need stability. You know, we're going into the Big Ten. I didn't want to go into the Big Ten with an unstable situation where everybody's going to be speculating all year who's going to be the coach. And but, you know, I wanted to eliminate that noise, and I wanted to have someone that was that's going to be here. And so. Uh, I really didn't consider it that much. It was always an option in the back of my head, but uh, I really wanted it to get someone permanent.